The Turkish media landscape has, in the less than four months since the failed coup, been transformed, reduced. This past week, another 15 media operations were shut down, most of them in the predominantly Kurdish southeast. The total number of shuttered media outlets has risen to more than 160. One of Turkey's oldest newspapers, Cumhuriyet, which has already seen a former editor flee to Germany, has just had its current editor taken into custody, along with a dozen of his staff. Prosecutors are saying that Cumhuriyet has been committing crimes on behalf of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, as well as having ties to the network of Fethullah Gulen, the man the government says was behind the attempted coup. The state has yet to provide the evidence. The arrests and closures are all made possible by the state of emergency that was recently extended into next year. It allows the government to bypass parliament, rule by decree and suspend rights and freedoms. And there's not a great deal that Turkey's media regulators who are supposed to protect the independence of the news media can do about it. This is a story of ever increasing numbers of media closures and steadily decreasing numbers of news sources. Our starting point this week is the Turkish capital, Ankara. Most forms of journalism consist of words and images. But when it comes to the state of the news media in Turkey, it is the numbers that paint the picture. They tell the story. According to a site called turkeypurge.com, which says it aims to keep track of what it calls the witch hunt that followed the failed coup, 186 media outlets have been shut down. 133 media workers have been arrested. And the number of journalists thrown out of work, according to the Turkish Journalists' Union, is between two and 3,000. These numbers are correct, or there might even be more. I can't give an exact number because every day there are so many raids, attacks and detentions on media outlets, it's hard to keep track. But if we look at the picture painted by the numbers, it does reflect the reality. Yes, those figures are representative of reality. Also, the matter about press passes is true. People are being informed by text message that their press passes have been annulled. The Director General of the Press and Information Office has no authorization to cancel press passes in this way. There are more than 100 journalists in jail at the moment, but there is another figure. It's not just the number of journalists in jail, it's the number of journalists who work like they are in jail. I'm talking here about censorship and self-censorship. That takes the numbers up into the thousands. So the picture is clear. No media outlet in Turkey can survive without siding with the AK Party. Now there are only a handful of papers left and there aren't strong enough alternative voices to stand up to government pressure. Soon there will be closures there too. Ahmed Sheik could have been talking about his own paper, Cumhuriyet. This past week, the authorities arrested 13 journalists there, including the editor. The paper then printed a front page headlined, We Will Not Surrender, and left blank two spaces, usually filled by columnists taken into custody. However, the employees there and the protesters who came out to support them know that given all the forced media closures, Jim Hudiet may be living on borrowed time, especially with prosecutors now alleging that the secular center-left paper has committed crimes on behalf of Gulenists, a socio-religious movement accused of masterminding the failed coup. It's a scenario that the head of Turkey's print regulator says is realistic. Until a little while ago, Cumhuriyet was bankrupt. I have friends who worked there who said that salaries were either lowered or not paid at all. Then there was a change in the paper's management and suddenly all salaries were paid. We all knew the owners didn't have much money and yet bundles of money, as if in sacks, started pouring into Cumhuriyet. How has a struggling newspaper suddenly transformed? Prosecutors are looking for Gulen fingerprints. Now this newspaper stands accused of being a supporter of the Gulen movement. A newspaper like Cumhuriyet, as old as the Republic itself, accused of being separatist or trying to bring down the government with a coup. Their logic and reasoning is inexplicable. 
If Turkey was run by the rule of law, there would be no such investigation. But there won't be any legal obstacle since the justice system has surrendered to a mafia-like government. The government has fewer and fewer legal obstacles to deal with, given the state of emergency it declared after the coup, and recently extended until January, which allows it to sidestep parliament and rule by decree. And the emergency conditions also enable the government to go over the head of Turkey's media regulators, the bodies that are supposed to deal with news outlets. Closures under emergency rule are different than at any other time, surely. This is the case in other parts of the world. In France, the emergency rule has been in place for over a year and a half now. The police there are able to detain people differently than they do under normal circumstances. This is the right of democratic governments. We also queried regulators at Rutuk, the Turkish Broadcast Authority. They took issue with our line of questioning, but defended the legality of the closures and again likened the situation in Turkey to France. That might be a valid comparison if France had shut down 186 media outlets, or even one. Only it hasn't. Here's the Turkish Prime Minister responding to criticism from the EU this past week. <laughs> and here's the reaction from the editor of a Kurdish news agency, DHA, that the government just shut down upon being informed of the Prime Minister's words. <laughs> Ever since the coup, critics have said the government's response has been wildly disproportionate, that it smacks of political opportunism. Primarily targeted on the media side have been outlets deemed to be Gulenist. However, the net was quickly widened to include Kurdish news outlets and their reporters. Until it was ordered closed this past week, Jinha was the only news agency of its kind. Kurdish and all-female. Last year, one of its journalists was arrested. She may be the only reporter ever jailed anywhere for being too excitable. I was arrested for looking too excited on the 16th of December 2015. The only reason I was looking excited was because I was reporting the news and I love doing my job. Maybe it's the most tragically comical event of the past 10 years, and it shows the current condition of the law in this country. Almost everything that is happening to the media in Turkey today is happening on illegal foundations. It is well known that these closures are unconstitutional, but under the state of emergency, everything, including the violation of the constitution and the law, is being permitted. The government, its regulators and its supporters argue they have the law on their side, and they're using it. This past Friday, new developments, an escalation, with the arrest of senior members of the pro-Kurdish opposition party, the HDP. Kurds in the southeast, who already have far fewer news sources than before, went online only to learn that their internet access had been denied or slowed to a crawl. Almost four months into the state of emergency, the Turkish media space seems to grow darker by the day, and there's no sign that the crackdown has run its course.